In this short video tutorial, we're going to take a look at probably the easiest tool that there is for creating a web page. And one of the things that makes it the easiest is the fact that you don't even have to register to use this website. And so this makes it another example in a series that I've been working on of tools for teachers and students that don't require a login and a password. They don't require registration. So please check out the rest of that series. If you look through my playlists, you'll find it. But this tool is called Telegraph. And if you look here in the upper left corner, you'll see how they spell Telegraph. It's more like telegraph.ph, but we'll call it Telegraph. And to use it, you simply go to that address and then start filling out this information. So let's do that. Let's say I'm a student in a Spanish class, and maybe my Spanish teacher has asked me to create a web page that teaches something that we've studied throughout the year. And let's say I would like to choose animals. So I'll go ahead and click where it says title, and I'll put in the title of my web page. Next, it says your name, and you can simply just click and put whatever you want in there. Because there is no registration for this website, you can just type whatever you want as your name. Okay, so I'll do that. Next, it says your story. And this is really where you put the text of your web page. It doesn't have to be a story. It can be whatever you want. So I want to put in a welcome paragraph here to introduce the topic of this web page. So give me a couple of minutes to do that, and then I'll resume the tutorial. Okay, I've finished that first paragraph. Now I can simply tap return or enter on the keyboard and it gives me the opportunity of writing another paragraph. And I think I'll go ahead and do that. I'll just type in something like los animales son, which means the animals are. And then I'll hit return again. And again, I get another paragraph. But this time, instead of a paragraph, I would like to add a photo or maybe something else. You can see here at the left, before I start typing, I have two other options that I have the opportunity of choosing. Let's look first at the camera icon. If I click that, it lets me upload a photo from my computer. You can see it gives me this window that I can use to navigate my computer and find where I might have photos stored that I might have downloaded from the internet or photos I might have taken with a camera. In this case, these are photos from the internet that are Creative Commons or uploaded to be shared. And I'm just gonna go ahead and choose this elephant photo. And it takes a couple of seconds, but eventually it loads that photo into my web page. And again, this web page, I'm building it without having a registration. It really is amazing that you can do this without having an account or any sort of login or password. So now that I've got that photo in there, notice at the bottom underneath the photo, it says caption optional. I'll click on that and I'll type in an elephant in Spanish. So un elefante. Now I can tap enter or return again and I get the opportunity of adding either more photos or more text. I would like to add a couple more photos, so please give me another few seconds while I add some photos and then I'll resume again. Great, so I've added now a couple of more photos and put captions there for them. Now you'll notice that these photos are pretty big. They're taking up pretty much the whole screen. I could have chosen smaller photos, but I'm pretty happy actually with the way this website is turning out. And just so you know, I do have the screen kind of blown up bigger. I used Control plus or Command plus to make it bigger. And of course I could use Command minus or Control minus to make it smaller as well. So you do have some control that way as well as you're using Telegraph, just like with just about any website. Okay, so now that I've got the photos in with some examples of animals in Spanish, let's look also at this other option here. It looks like a less than sign together with a greater than sign. If I click on that, it gives me some instructions. It says paste a YouTube, Vimeo, or Twitter link and press enter. I would like you to see examples of each of these. So again, give me a few seconds to get this ready and then we'll resume. So here on the second tab, I have a YouTube video that I've found that is a song about the animals in Spanish. And I could click play and I could show this to my student and we could watch this, but in the interest of time, just know that it's a super cute song about the animals in Spanish. So if I wanted to include that on my web page, all I have to do is go up here, click on the URL, just a single click highlights it. I copy that URL and then back in Telegraph, I can just paste in that URL, hit enter, and look, it automatically imports that YouTube video. If I want to, I can put in a caption. In the interest of time, I'll just simply put song there. And then here at the left, let's look at a Vimeo video. Here in Vimeo, here's another song. And again, I'm just gonna click to highlight, to copy, and then to paste in the URL, hit enter. 
and that fast I've got a Vimeo video that I can include on my page. What about Twitter? Well, if you find a tweet that you would like to share, you can simply click on this symbol here in the upper right of the tweet. It's a drop down arrow and there's an option to copy the link to the tweet. There's the link, I'll copy it, and then back in Telegraph I can click and paste, hit enter, and it includes the tweet in my Telegraph page. So really, I feel that this is a pretty amazing resource and tool for teachers and students. I love that it's so easy and that there's no bothering with a registration, a login and password. As long as the students don't you know, put their personal information on this page, they are safe to use it and you know, no one is getting their email address or any other personal information. And so it can be a really nice alternative for maybe younger students that don't have an email address or who are too young to sign up for other services. And of course, typically when you have a tool that is so easy, you are sacrificing some of the power that the tool could have had. And that's true. This is so easy that it doesn't have every single bell and whistle that other website builders have like Weebly or Google Sites. But sometimes that's a good trade-off. Sometimes you just need something quick and easy and it doesn't have to have hundreds of options. Now that I'm done with this web page and I feel pretty good about the results, I can just click here in the upper right on publish and this is now a live website. You're welcome to visit it. Please do. Here's the address for it and as a student I could just copy that down, give it to my teacher or copy paste it into an email to the teacher, turn it in through an LMS, whatever I need to do to get that turned into my teacher. So thanks for watching and I hope you'll enjoy using Telegraph in the classroom, but it's also useful outside of education. So I hope you'll find some good uses for it. And please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel for more videos about technology for teachers and students. And watch for a new video at least every Monday.